Welcome to the guide for Madame Xu, the elegant serpent diva, and the Spy vs. Spy PvP game Deceive Inc. I'm Black Talent and I'll show you how to shed your skin to show your true colors in this guide. Madame Xu is categorized as a scoundrel character, and scoundrels are sly, cunning, and use dirty tricks to get ahead of the competition. Madame Xu has a way of doing this that goes in harmony with her serpent-like theme, as she will shed her skin or cover to fool rivals and be alert of their presence. She is definitely one of my favorite characters to play, as like a snake she's able to get out of any bad situation, as well as keep her rivals guessing as she takes them down. She also also is the character that I find to be the best at extracting the package. Let's see how she slithered her way into our hearts starting with her expertise. Her first expertise is called Cobra's Deceit. Madame Xu will enter a stance that will allow you to choose any nearby NPCs and enter their body in cover, while leaving behind your last cover as a decoy. If your decoy takes damage, it will dissolve and your rival will know they've been tricked. This ability is useful in so many situations. If you're losing your fight or need to get away, you can just jump into a nearby NPC that will give you the chance you need to slip away. You may also be fighting a rival on even grounds, but you want to shift into a nearby body to get a surprise angle. Also, you can start a fight around guards and then slip into a different cover, allowing them to take extra damage from those guards and then you can hop in and finish them off. Another great aspect to this is that if you shift to a nearby NPC that actually happens to be a player, both of your covers will be exposed. Now this is great if there's somebody that you are suspecting is a rival but you're not really sure and you don't want to leave your cover by shooting at them, you can simply shift to that NPC and you can see if they are actually a player or not. And if they aren't, you won't have your cover blown where everyone can see where you are, but you can just continue in your NPC shuffle like nothing happened. I also use this ability to upgrade to a better body. Let's say I want to get into a guard's body. I can just easily shift into a guard's body without everyone seeing that I just did so, leaving that marker on the ground. You can also use this to finesse your way into a door that you don't have intel for. Let's take a look at her second variation, Serpent's Bluff. Now this variation is my favorite. Now it's similar to the first variation, however instead of just transferring to a nearby NPC instantly, you are able to mark one of them and transfer bodies whenever you want within a certain time window. This is excellent if you want to grab something in plain sight and you're worried that somebody is watching, or if you want to test a potential rival, you can simply mark a body and then shoot at that rival, and if they're not one, you can transfer to the body that you marked like nothing happened. You can also use this to fool rivals and expertly extract the case. All you have to do is mark an NPC that is near or walking to the area that you want to go, while you yourself run in the opposite direction to a different point of interest. And then, once everybody's on your tail going the other way, you simply transfer back all the way across to the body you were originally at, and then move to the extraction point. If you want a breakdown video of key ways to do this, later I'll be dropping videos on pro tips specifically for each character, as you guys continually are giving me great feedback in the comments, and of course I'll drop some credits to those that give that good information. Her last variation is called Python's Ruse. This is similar to her other two abilities, but instead of shifting once, you'll be able to shift up to three times. Personally, I haven't found many useful ways to use this besides constantly shifting in a battle to avoid being a target and only putting out damage unsuspectedly when they can't see who I am. Uh, but if you have some other good uses of this ability, just let me know down in the comments. Now let's take a look at her weaponry. Now forgive me for some of these pronunciations as Chinese is not my mother tongue. Her first variation is called Zhu Long. This is an automatic crossbow with a fast fire rate and reload time. However, it does have a lower damage output per shot. Now it may be hard to get used to at first and you may find yourself running out of ammo very often, but you'll be able to get used to it based on its automatic nature. However, things get a little bit better with her second variation called Long Shen, my personal favorite. This is a burst crossbow that will fire three shots in quick succession. It's perfect on ammo consumption and far easier to take down enemies as you will get multiple hits in any lined up shot. Her final variation, Xuan Wu, is a Gatling crossbow that will increase in speed the longer you shoot. Needless to say, it consumes far more ammunition, so make sure you have the accuracy for it. Now let's slither into her passives. Her first variation is Viper's Knowledge. 
Madame Shu is able to see when rivals nearby blow their cover and will leave a marker where they last were. This is a great way to see if there are rivals fighting nearby and where they are. Often you may hear shooting but you can't exactly tell where it is so this passive will leave that marker so you can figure out where they are and even finish off the victor of a little scuffle. Her second variation is called Crate's Instinct. When an enemy nearby is low health they will be traced with a green glow that will stick to them. And this will help you if you know someone is about to go down and you can power through the fight as you know they are about to be finished. Or if a person is trying to flee, you'll be able to track them as they run, even getting your cover back to surprise them later. Her final passive is Mamba's March. At each phase progression, you will be able to see the current location of rivals anywhere on the map regardless of where they are, although it just leaves a shadow of them and does not follow them. This is very useful because she's the only character that is accurately able to see how many players are left in the game at given times. So if the package comes up, you're able to see how many players are still in the game and if you should go for for it or hang back a little bit. Also, you'll be able to catch if a rival is nearby during that time. Let's talk about gadgets. As far as gadgets go, as always, you can pick the ones that you prefer to use, so don't feel that my suggestions are the best. Really, you can find success with whatever works for you personally. But we're talking about gadgets that excel for Madame Zhu based on her build. I find the recon drone personally to be very helpful. For example, if people leave their cover because they're in a fight, oftentimes it may be somewhere where you can't get to so quickly. So I quickly just send out my recon drone to that location and I mark whoever's there. That way I can have more time to get in there and track them down. You also may find good use out of gadgets that can be thrown down that other players can see. So if you want to throw down one of these gadgets in a very populated area where others might see you, you can do this and quickly shift to another character, kind of as bait to see if someone takes the bait as they saw what you just did. That way you'll be able to get the element of surprise and have a turret ready for the fight. Now looking at field upgrades, for her, you are completely up to the ones that you want to choose based on your playstyle. These are the ones that I personally use. I choose to have some extra ammo in the early game because she does tend to run out a little bit quickly. And you definitely want to have expertise cooldown in the purple or blue slot because that is such a useful expertise so you want to use it as much as you can. As far as tips go, I gave most of the useful information throughout this video. So my final tip for her is think outside of your character and how you can use misdirection to get the upper hand. Other players cannot see where you are transferring, so try to use that to manipulate them into fighting with each other. You can also virtually do whatever you want in the map using her, because if someone notices you do something, all you have to do is use Serpent's Bluff to warp to a totally different part of the map and they have no idea what just happened. That's all I have for Madam Sue. Give the video a like if you find this helpful. Subscribe if you want to see more of my content. Also, leave those tips in the comment. As the game grows and new players come to check out the guides, I want them to learn from you experts as well so they can really get all the help that they need. Those of you that are new to my channel, typically as part of my main videos, I always shout out a smaller channel to help them grow and get some exposure. So if you believe in my cause, please support my channel to make a bigger platform for those that really put their heart and soul into their content and just need a little bit more help to succeed. But thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.